All right, Disc Golf World, my name is Luke Humphreys, and we are bringing you GK Productions coverage of the Oklahoma Open final round brought to you guys by Farmers Insurance and Innova Disc Golf. With me today, Connor O'Reilly, playing in this tournament as well. Who do we got today, Connor? What's going on, guys? We've got Jonathan Nicholson currently in the lead, Mason Ford, Coda Hatfield, two and three back respectively, and John Willis rounding out the card. Three Texans and an Oklahoma native out here ready to battle the windiest day that we saw out of the three days out here. Yeah, we saw conditions change, got a little cooler, definitely windier today, which doesn't come into play on all of the holes. It's a very wooded track, but there are some open holes with some water that we'll see that come into play on. Emerson Keith, Matt Bell, yourself, just a handful of strokes back. Anything can happen out here in the woods, but here we are, hole one. Like we've said before, not so tricky if it's in the middle of the course, but maybe as the first hole, a little shaky, couple gaps to hit. Yeah, it looks like it's playing over par today. Definitely had a lot gustier wind coming at our heads here. A little bit off the right shoulder, kept flipping up, so definitely one that was going to make you second guess it a little bit. Your final round of the 2021 Oklahoma Open, brought to you by Sansone Insurance. This is your lead card. First on the tee, your leader. At 24 under par, Jonathan Nicholson. There you go. DFW guy. Sponsored by Dynamic Discs. I want to apologize. That disc that he was throwing was not a slammer. It is a suspect. I kind of figured as much. It's, uh, you know, it's like their version of a zone, basically. Stable, torque-resistant putter. Yeah, turn-resistant, but also doesn't fade too much, so. He said he really liked it for those straight lines up to 300 feet. Yeah, he snuck right through that gap yesterday with a soft harp, I think he was throwing yesterday. Absolutely parked it. Doesn't get lucky today. That'll be a pitch up. Yeah, maybe that wind made him bump, bump up to the suspect there. If you guys were with us for first round coverage, Mason Ford throwing a bunch of coyotes. It's a straight to understable fair or mid range from Innova, similar to a Mako 3 or something. Third on the tee. At 21 under par, your 2016 Oklahoma Open champion, Coda Hatfield. Mm, crowd favorite already, I see. Coda's been playing in these parts for a long time, so definitely well known around here. Yeah, it's class act. some hard pan greens out here you're definitely going to see some skips he goes outside the circle there he'll be putting downwind though John Willis. john's a young guy fully on tour this year played all the big ones played well at a bunch of them gaining experience with uh every tournament he's playing showing his clean flat black backhand pull right there Like a straight mid range, maybe a rock there. John chipping up that soft harp Luke was talking about. Yeah, kind of getting fancy on that. Looked like possibly an easier backhand, but he's comfortable with this forehand. Works. Yeah, he told me his short backhand's been one of his uh, less comfortable points that he's going to work on this offseason. Coda's putter has been hot all week. That one looked good as well. Mason usually pretty deadly within 50 feet. He'll have plenty of tournament rounds where he maybe only drops one or two on the ground from that range. I'd describe the win today as just inconsistent. You yeah, never... it was definitely feigning like it was going to be really strong in the morning and it kind of Lessened from what we expected, but it definitely kept switching directions very often. These guys tapping in, and we are off. Second hole is a par four. Fairly soft, just the one big tree 
on the right is a mando got to be left of that and then you can't go into the tall grass on the left side of your screen now that's ob as well basket placed behind this big what is, what is this tree Connor? it's a pecan tree pecan tree this that one's got to be close to 100 years old i'd say you'd think for sure little ob behind uh, but not too much challenge for these guys yeah we had a right to left and a headwind kind of presenting here today and to the left of that mando tree there's a bit of a low ceiling with the hanging branches off of the other tree and made this one play a little trickier than days past look like t-bird from john John taking that verdict again. Overstable mid-range. He's just going to elect to chip this hole in half. Definitely a strategy you can use on a number of far fours out here. Super explosive, compact swing from Mason Ford. It's good position as well. We'll see if that short sleeve is in his way at all there. Looks like a Raptor from Coda. It's a beat up Raptor, but yeah. that's a solid position right there. He'll probably go with a little forehand flat to hyzer shot. To approach there. John looks like he's playing the long side of that big mm. tree, but yeah, it's somehow it's the only thing in that area, but it's a bit of a magnet. Yeah. It's probably six feet across and definitely you'll grab a disc or two. Coda picks up the same disc, looking for some ground play. Just straighten him out a bit, but circle's edge look for him. Another one of those to start his round. Yeah, making himself work a little bit hard on the putting green. He'll he'll look to dial that in and give himself some closer ones later in the round. As wide from J. Nick, about 45 feet, maybe 42. Yeah, outside the circle, we'll see if he elects for that little step putt that he was hitting yesterday. Now, Mason's not the tallest guy, but I don't believe that sleeve's going to be in his way. Yeah, I thought maybe it was going to be in his his footwork more so than his swing, but Mason will get a kick out of that. Great shot from him. That'll be an easy birdie. Interesting but effective putting style that John Willis is going to bring to the table today. Takes it a bit down left, similar to Emerson Keith. Yeah, he's got like a... Oh, yeah. That's a good sign for John there. Knocking down a circle to his first real look on the putting green, and he hits a outside the circle putt. I think out of all the people that step putt, he like gets onto the one foot and balances himself and then moves forward. Mm -hmm. It's really unique. I don't see anybody else doing it that way. Yeah, a lot of people bring more momentum through the putt. He kind of just does a little jump bouncer almost. Mm, just enough for Coda. Going Steph Curry with that mini on the way to the basket. Ooh, and a tap. What a surprise. <laughs> Keep your tap counter on. Sip of water every time. Yeah, I think we'll, we're two for two now. If you get the pattern, you'll see. I think John kind of has like a similar putt to Coda in a way, the way he holds it out far in front of his body. I see that. Yeah. Headed into hole three. This is a longer par three here, left to right turning, a big forehand or a really late turning backhand, which seems to set up super tricky. I can't even imagine trying to backhand it, but people do birdie it that way. Connor's got the big forehand, though. You put it inside the circle yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I did. This one's only given up a couple birdies all weekend. Second hardest par three to score on. Definitely takes a high caliber shot to get a look inside of 50 feet here. Yeah, 
<laughs> Someone likes it. It looks like a solid line there from John. Probably going to leave him. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he rolls up to about 45 feet. Yeah. Was that him stoked about it? I no, like... I think it was someone else. Okay. So you got a caddy. John's not super vocal in that way a lot of times, I don't think, on the course. All right, so Mason went roller here, day one. Oh, and that looked really good. Just a little tight to the right side. Yeah, that line was definitely one that could penetrate up there close to the circle if you just hit it a little cleaner. Coda playing a bit of the force over, but he doesn't quite get that one forced. Yeah, he does love the Anheuser angle out of the hand, those power forehands. Looks like he might have found where it starts to bend right and the creek gets a little more forgiving there, but if you're if you're in early, there's some nasty spots off on the right. John going roller for us here. Come Slipped on. out on the leaf a little bit there. I feel like that stopped him from getting the flip up that he would have gotten. Shout out to those spectators. Quick on their feet. Some nice dodges. Yeah, Coda gets up here to the part of the creek that's a little more open, but if you're 50 to 100 feet back of that, it's pretty nasty. Ooh, yeah. Shows he's got the touch with the forehand as well. I'm liking John's color combo here, matching his hat and his putters with the baskets. Mm. Typically a good way to do it. Makes him go in more, doesn't it? Some would argue. On target. Just a little lacking from Mason. Right, two rotations away from having a metal hit there. All right. Going to see another step put here. Look at how he balances and then releases. Just low there, but... Very effective to ground yourself. Like you talked about yesterday, he's got that background in kinesiology and muscle movement. Yeah, I believe John has a master's in kinesiology. That's a lot of college. Yeah. He must know a lot of things. Using it all for the Frisbee golf. That's a long play. I like it, John. It is. We got both the Mondohano sisters in tow. I think Alexis took this thing down. Yeah, Alexis won in dominating fashion, almost averaged a thousand. So shout out to you, Alexis. Unbelievable golf. Spoiler alert. Oh, I think I'm supposed to say that before, but here we are, par four. This is uh, a similar shot to the one you'll play on hole three. That's about it. You know, we'll chip up after that. Yeah, then right here in the sunshine and. Decide whether you want to tap in putt or you want to try to throw a little floater into the basket or not. Yeah, not overly complicated. That same Optoballista Pro from John. This one's really beat in. I believe he got it from Tristan in some kind of trade. Tristan was done with it. Really? But John likes it. Yeah, Tristan throws his forehands far. It would make sense that he needs something a little more stable. Yeah. But Jonathan's got that one dialed. That was right about 400 feet. Puts him in perfect position. Mason taking the more stable of his two coyotes. Looking to just play, just play a straight line. Hmm. Solid kick there. He'll probably have a skinny backhand on the inside of that tree. Yeah. Unless he wants to lean out. Coyote made its way him. back to the game trail. That Anheuser force over from Coda. This one needs to not this one skip might test hard. that right. So. Yeah, he'll have a weird stance in there, but it's close enough to where he'll be beating himself up if he's not inside the circle for a putt. Yeah. Let's take that rock out of John again. Mm, just chill right there, though. Might be a decent spot. Yeah, he's on that short pad or close to it, so he'll at least be slightly open. Oh, yeah, he actually landed on it. 
All right, so it's like 390. Kind of got to move it left to right. And then... That's that disc you threw a roller with, so it must be pretty stable. Mm. Maybe a T-Bird or something. Yeah, a T-Bird TL, something like that. Eagle, maybe. If you haven't seen John play, he's uh, got a slow run-up, but he's got a lot of snap, and he'll surprise you with his distance and power that he can achieve. He's got a lot of elasticity in his body. Ooh. Thank you. A lot of ground play out of that Avier X3. It works perfectly, though, for Mason Ford. It's a stable zone approach from Coda. That'll be a full flexor. Yeah, looking to keep the nose up a little bit here. He's going to have to earn that one. Definitely making himself work on the green so far. Mm. Okay. John with a little quick release backhand. No worries. Trying to fluff it in there. All right. Let's this see if John just wants that easy one or if he wants to try to give the crowd something. This is exact position. The yeah, brand he's just laying up. John's a smart player. I call him the robot affectionately sometimes. He's uh, very calculated, and when he's executing, he can play some solid golf as he's showing this weekend. Yeah, it's a compliment if you're talking about somebody's golf game. Absolutely. It's consistency. Oh. Coda had the want on it, mm. as we say. Just a little high on hole one, just a little high here on hole four. Like you said, putting himself in that range that it's not guaranteed. Nice birdies from John and Mason. Coda's going to be taking the lone par here. Yeah, you'll notice in John's putt, he kind of lines up his shoulders a little square to the basket, and then as he draws it back, he dips that right shoulder forward. Very unique style. John wiping the dust off his disc. All right, quick look in. See who's playing hot so far. Bo Tillman, name to watch. He's already jumped himself to four back, six through eight holes. Connor O'Reilly also starting fast, as you did yesterday, and then Emerson Keith not slacking himself. Yeah, definitely a lot of players within striking range. This course, pretty simple when you're hitting your gaps, but if you're off the fairway, then can definitely be some trouble and there's definitely some scoring separation out here so yep. we'll see how it shapes up yeah this whole whole five a par four got the elbow right about where we're flying the drone through shout out to disc barn for sponsoring this drone coverage by the way check them out at the discbarn.com got a bunch of discs in stock all the brands love their support pretty easy par four on the easier side just got to beat this initial gap. It's about 320 feet off the tee. Yeah, I'd say so. Do that, you're left with something in the range of 225 to 180 feet on a straight shot into the green. And John, yeah, that's uh, fortunate to get through the bunker, and that's going to be easy position there. It's easy to pull it right and long into that tree line that John did off the tee, trying to mm -hmm. avoid catching yourself early on the corner here, which would be no man's land. That works out for Mason. He'll have a much more hazard approach than Jonathan will. Both of them will have the low ceiling entry to worry about. This looks... Like what you're trying to do. Yeah, that's pure right there out of Coda. Oh my goodness. That was nasty. John knew it. He's going to have a pretty easy 200 foot upshot from there. A little bit of ceiling to contest with, but the ground's playing pretty fast right now, so you can slide that thing a solid 20, 30 feet at the right pace. Guessing that's a Draco from John. That's perfect position as well. John's had these things on lock all week long. Oof. Leaving them really close, throwing that base plastic that's not skipping on these hard grounds, really more grabbing. 
It's making the difference for him. Probably averages 15 feet closer based on plastic choose. Ch- choice. Choosing. No doubt. Definitely something to note for all you guys who are trying to keep your disc as close to the basket as possible. Five to ten feet, three feet, whatever it may be, can make a big big difference on a green, whether it's having a comfortable stance or just not making yourself work as hard on the green over time. Yeah, it's a numbers game. That's a good approach. A little short from Mason, but inside the circle. Coda going to his stable putter approach. Yeah, it's perfect. flat pull in the zone. Easy money. Oh, yeah. Little left. I'm sure he had to make sure to watch that one in there. Good to get that one to stick, though. Yeah, it's a well-played hole. Johnny's he's playing some clean golf, showing why he's here. Yeah, this is one of those holes you really want to get at least two, if not all three rounds, if you want to. Be up there at the top in this tournament. That'll be an all-star from these guys. Back with a double fairway, hole six. Backhanders will throw this route here. We're flying. Neither route's exactly pure. You got to get a little skinny late, is what we've said in the, the rounds prior, basically. But this is one that you want to have. Even if you get stopped near the end of the flight, you have a circle two putt. Yeah, definitely one of those ones you're counting on a putt on at the worst. Lucid X Felon from John. Mm, whack. Gets it on the ground early, which plays well on this hole. Mm, see, they got to be early or late with that forehand route. Yep. Coda coming all the way over for the high five. Shout out to Mr. Mondahanu. That dude is awesome in the red right there. Always smiling. Yeah, Papa Art is the homie. That's that Star Rock 3 out of Mason. Just a touch late on the release there. It almost looked like he was lined up a little bit off. Yeah, he's, he was a little bit on the right side of that tee box, I feel like. Nice delicate shot out of Coda. Oh, squeaking by that tree. Unfortunately, skipping a little deep. Looked like that was a raptor. It's only 270 feet. He just needed to touch down a little bit on that one. Mid-range out of John. Nice hyzer angle. Laying the disc. Fight straight while flying on hyzer. Yeah, that slower speed disc. You see taking the ground a lot easier than the higher speed disc coded through. Smooth little chip up from Mason. All right, Coda's got an open look. Oof. He's so close on all of these. Grab metal on each of them. Just a little bit off. Guess John got distracted by something and decided to step off his putt. Oof. Looks like it definitely got in his head. Mm, there were some people moving back there. Starting next year, I know the rules are going to change a little bit to where if it's not a distraction directly in line with you in the basket, you're supposed to still continue play on the same play clock. So, yeah, 
we'll see how that's integrated mm-hmm. throughout the season. I hope I hope something works out. The pace of play this year seemed to be slower than years past. Yeah, courses are getting harder. Players are really wanting to compete, and there's a lot of players who can play. So some guys are maybe taking a little more time than they could. Moving on to one of the shorter holes, if not the shortest, on the course. A little gap to hit right off the bat. Very penalizing if you don't make it through it. But if you do, you're almost guaranteed a circle two. Possibly even a circle one. We saw Mason hit chains on this first round. We'll see if somebody can throw this in. What do you yeah, think? Only averaging a tenth of a stroke under par today. Showing you that even at 250, a range that you think would play a half stroke under par... It's got a little teeth on it. Got this gap. That's blocking John's shot right there. As well as that bush. That's kind of a no putt zone on the left of the green there. Oh. Mm. Ooh. That's going to be trouble for John. If he can save far from there, it's going to be an impressive shot. We'll see if he busts one of those forehand rollers out. It seemed like he just got a little quick on that one. Oof. Mason. Yeah, you could tell. I was just a touch late. Just nicking that tree on the right side two holes in a row. All right, the gap has never looked tighter for Coda. Let's see if he's got <laughs> nerves of steel right here. Yeah, I'm saying he does. Yeah, pures it through there flat. It's going to get a nice straighter skip. Yeah. 18, 19 feet. Knows he's got a chance to pick up at least one on the card. Sigh of relief for him. He's looking to make a push at the leader, but he's been just a little slow all around, so yeah. he's hoping he can play off this momentum. This oh. one has a chance. Ooh. Ooh. Just short. Good line from John. Yeah, beautiful touch from him. We'll see. Yeah, here's that forehand roller out of John that I was talking about. He's really got a good feel for these for the most part mm, but that one turned over a little quick on him yeah could have been the bounce he said that's about all he had so maybe trying to put too much speed on it would have been too risky there he thought yeah don't want to turn a, a bogey into a double especially when you've got a couple stroke cushion here you can tell mason knows he left one on, on the table right there and he's trying to make this push at john just a layup from John. Smart play. Here's Coda to take one from everybody, two from Jonathan. That's big. Yeah, coming in into the stretch here, if you can grab maybe two birdies out of the three, that'd be a good swing of momentum for him going forward. Nice little up and down from John. You can see just past the tree line is the open area, the lake where the wind is picking up. So that hole experiencing some headwind, making it play the hardest it has all week. Yeah, we'll see if they play it during one of the gusts or kind of in, in some downtime. All right. You can't hide from the wind anymore. Here you are, water in play precariously placed basket right there beside it and the inconsistent wind that I was talking about Connor. Yeah so I'm playing over a quarter stroke over par today. Definitely a hole that you want to give yourself a putt on but it can also be a scary one. It's just a mentally challenging hole more so than anything. On a day like this there's no shame in bailing out left and playing a circle two putt it looks like it'll be left side of the green yeah, there. Yeah, Coda's going to be our first contestant to do. Yo, a lot of times you'll get knocked down by like the tree canopy there short of the basket. Or he flew it a little long, so he doesn't get any of that break action off the trees. Kind of winding out there, huh? <laughs> so yeah, it looks like they are getting some gusts, yeah. as John exclaims. Mm. Hangs that one tight, but... It's going to have a lot of pace on it. Wow. Okay. A nice checkup, though. Yeah, flies it just outside the circle, but doesn't land more than seven feet away from there. Yeah, great plays from both of these guys. On a day like this, with a penalizing drop zone like this hole has, you really don't want to test that water. 
last bit of dirt for Mason's fingertips there. He was telling me this morning he really, really likes this Oklahoma dirt, doesn't have to use his powder. Oh, that was looking really good for Mason. Yeah, a little less spin on that line, and he's got a chance to ring it up. I believe John said he got his Lucidex Enforcer. I apologize. I called it a Defender yesterday. Right here. Ooh. Got this one back out of the pond. Stay high. And hopefully it doesn't go back. Oh, look at He cruises it long. <laughs> Made sure not to make that mistake again. I'll just throw it past the pond. How about that? I'm yeah, sure. He told me he swam for about 24 to 40 minutes looking for that one earlier in the week. And got it? No. But someone else raked it out. Oh, my goodness. Shout out to the community again. Tulsa, uh, they've showed us a great time while we've been here and can't say enough about them growing the sport, growing the courses in the area. Looked like Mason was running that one. Yeah, that left to right tailwind that he was presented with just cut his disc out of the air. Yeah, it looks like it kind of killed John's a little bit too. Yeah, the second you play that thing high for the tailwind drop, and it doesn't. You're you're messing with the water. The screen's a little scary when you play a course where there's no greens on the water, and then all of a sudden you step up to one where there's water and wind. It's a in hard pack ground with a little bit of a slope, just enough to cause your disc to roll, roll a little bit. Definitely will make you overthink things. Yeah, presents a fun challenge. All these guys just gonna take that par which is good on a day like this. Yeah, if you're inside 25 feet here, you definitely want to grab it. But anything outside that, kind of give it a softer bid and take your power and move on. Headed into hole nine, that lake on the right in play, lake left in play. But anybody carrying it past the 380 mark doesn't have to worry about that. It's just finding your way through this gap and not into the out of bounds creek behind it. Plays actually is a tricky hole. The wind inconsistent like it is today. It's it's a great birdie to have. Yeah, late flight accuracy, and you gotta have some power control if you're a faster player who can throw in the five hundred plus range. So definitely a little trickier than it could be if it was in the woods. Just one gust of wind taking Coda's disc from the Heiser angle all the way over to Anheuser angle. That's yeah, a tricky putt over there. You can see those feather banners and see what direction they're of wind they're dealing with right now. A wind that will hold your disc straight, which is good here if you can hit the angle right. Mm. That's where you see a lot of the birdies from on this hole. Heiser and out just barely around circle's edge, maybe circle two. Yeah, not typically a ton of circle one putts on this. Maybe a quarter of the field or so. Looks like Mason might have crept it just inside, maybe just out. It's going to be close. It's that same Blister Pro. I believe this one's... Uh, Enforcer. Oh, oh yeah, that's a, <laughs> a great tree right there. He asked for it, though. You heard him shout, hit a for tree. Sure. <laughs> I may or may not have got the birdie doing the same thing day two. Ooh, got to oh, sit now. Oh, man. Looks like he's okay. You can end up in that creek, though, if you get a little aggressive on that putt. Mason just outside, mm. trusting his jumper, even with the water long. It's a good putt right there. Look at the body control. No wasted motion. No. Everything directed right towards those chains. Yeah, no wobble either. That was a pure pop from the hand. John putting with P1Xs, I believe. Ooh. -hoo. Bit of a straighter beaded putter from Discmania. Cash's right side. Great putt from him. Coda's band tap is 
contagious. Looks like John's uh, joining the party. Hmm. He did it a whole or two ago as well. All right, so three birdies. Really well done from the card. Don't typically see that many. A little smile from Coda. That has been the front nine. Only one bogey the entire time. Jonathan Nicholson on seven. Tons of birdies from these guys. Jonathan retains the lead. Let's check in on the leaderboard and see if anybody else is making a move from Chase Guard. Looks like Matt's five down through 11. Only two off the lead at the moment. I'm six through eleven. Coda or Bo is still shooting. Solid round seven down. Only four back off the lead. Yeah, Brandon and Logan shooting hot scores as well. All comes down to this back nine. So come join us there. Big thanks to Farmers Insurance and Innova Discs for sponsoring this tournament. And of course, GK Productions for bringing you guys this coverage. For Connor O'Reilly, my name's Luke Humphreys. We'll see you on that back nine. Thanks for joining us, you guys. It's going to be an exciting one. A lot of players within reach here. John hasn't showed too many signs of slowing up. See if he can keep it up. Keep that card clean. <laughs>